You'll be excited to know that things that you throw away in the bin or things that you disregard, somebody is picking it up and making it into luxury pieces for you to buy. And when you see the pieces, you'll be amazed on what Jewel is doing here at the new Afropolitan store that's here at the Gallery 1957. It is amazing. From bamboo to wood to steel to all sorts of things, I'm gonna show you what she is doing right here in Accra. How are you? I'm good, I'm good, gorgeous good lady. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Good to Jewel, see you too. like, I'm amazed. This is made in Ghana. Yes. Not everything, but mostly. Most mostly. Of the things are Most made of the things you see Ghana. here. Yes, yes. Okay, please, let's <laughs> go around. I want to know everything. Okay. Um, obviously, you're somebody that moved from the UK. Yes. You started off as a fashion designer. Yes and then moved on. You said you're not you're not calling yourself a designer anymore. No. You're calling yourself the storyteller. Yes. So tell us the stories behind all oh. of these amazing pieces that you have made. Okay. So this concept, so I'm a designer, well, I'm a storyteller. Yeah. So I started off in fashion, I did a bit of fine art, wow. then I did journalism. I'm all over the place. Oh, wow. But right now I'm using interiors and products as my tools to tell the story I want to tell. And this story is called When We Were Kings. When We Were Kings. Kings. So it was inspired by the year of return. Okay. And um, I was just thinking about our brothers and sisters coming back from the diaspora and they go to the slave castle mm -hmm. and they go around Accra, they learn about all this history. And I really thought, mm, how can I create a space that is almost like the antithesis yes. of the slave castle? Yes. You know? That just shows, yeah, stuff. this just shows the magic of us, the wonder of us, the, maj the majesty of us. And so I thought, okay, let me try and create a space that does that, that makes, you know, especially kids that look up and go, oh my God, yes. is this what we're about? Yes. Yeah. So it was 30 days. 30, you did this in 30 days? <laughs> wow. We slept on the floor. <laughs> oh my goodness, 30 days. It was 30 days of madness. Okay, let's go through right. some of the pieces. <laughs> okay, so we have our staple, which are what we call our root trees, and they're tabletops. Mm. And, you know, in Ghana, we throw this stuff away. Mm -hmm. We're abundant in natural resources, so we've got trees, we've got all different types of wood. So right now, they're cutting down all our trees, right, for resources to, when you're building a house, they cut down all the trees. And then I go by and I just say, hey, <laughs> I'll come and collect it wow. for you. So you've got things like mahogany and redwood and even ebony wood, ebony wood, which is like, you know, I think it's more expensive than gold. Yes. But we're throwing this away. And people are using it for firewood. That's what, can, you imagine? can you imagine? So I go around picking all this stuff and I'm like, you know, these in 10 years time, you're not going to get this anymore because we're not it's allowing true. our trees to grow. So what you're getting is younglings, like a tree like this, it's mahogany. It's one piece, I haven't done anything to it. Nature did this. Wow. So we just take it from the roots, from the ground. We make sure we don't mess it up. Then we shape it. Then we treat it. In the case of this, we bleach it naturally. Wow. With like lemon juice and salt water for three months. For three months. So that it gets that white tone. Or in the case of something like this, we burn it. So it hasn't been painted. We also try and be as organic. So and this isn't painted? No, it's burnt. And this is bleach. It's not painted. Wow. So we try to also be as natural and as, as authentic as possible. Yeah. So it's a process. So these, this is our staple, our roots. And, you know, and again, so this, this could be used as a table. That's a tabletop. Yeah. It could be table, you, coffee, put glass you put your top. glass on. And depending on how big the glass is, it could sit six people, it could sit 12 people, round okay. glass, square glass. It's true. So it's flexible in that sense. But the main thing is that, again, in 10 years' time, it's true. you go looking for this and it'll be like, you know. So we also like to create things that will appreciate. Yeah almost treated like art pieces yeah. because you know you're paying a premium for it so it has to love you back almost Absolutely. so that's really important to us and also each tree is unique so i try not to repeat okay yeah so, so if you're buying stuff. yeah if you're buying this at this price no one else will have it 
you know, you could have another tree, it might be a different, you know, look at the characters, nature, yeah. yeah. yeah so it different. might be a different tone, another yeah. size, a different personality, but you know, no one else has it. So that's really important for me as well to do that. This green chair, <laughs> yeah. please, what is that made out of? That's bamboo. Good. That's bamboo. So if you look around, a lot of our stuff is like natural. We're using about seven or eight materials. We've got wood, bamboo, stone, metal, glass, and feathers wow. and rattan. I think that's it. So in this whole space, that's about it. So it's also showing the, you know, the diversity and versatility of our materials. Because when you think a wooden table, you just think a wooden table, table but yeah. no. A wooden table can do so many things, look so many ways, be treated in so many ways. So it's almost like I'm trying to show us off. Yeah. Show yeah, them no, you are. And even saying that, listen, even the stuff we throw away is treasure. It's true. You know, because we you are can that blessed. It into something exactly. Else. We are that blessed and that enriched in our resources that even our rubbish is luxurious. You know. Let's go to the table. Wow. Okay. So this is this bamboo. is bamboo. And this, and is, this bamboo. is bamboo. Yeah. So again, showing the diversity of material. You know, and just and just playing and just seeing what's possible. You know? Absolutely. So what made you come out with like the design of it to have this sticking out like Okay, so some of our designs are inspired by sometimes, you know, you go on Instagram, you look at other creatives yeah, go, yeah. and saying that, okay, can we do this in, in our materials this way? Okay. So there's certain like there's a wishbone chair there, that's a classic iconographic yeah, yeah, chair. Yeah. It's like, hey, can we do this in Ghana using our materials? materials. And actually find that actually we can. So there's that element. Then we do original designs completely okay. from us and we sketch. And, and sometimes we're inspired by the material. So certain materials bend, certain materials will snap, okay. certain materials. So again, how far can we take, you know, how far can we play? And so that's also really, really important to us. And again, always thinking about what story are we trying to tell? Mm -hmm. You know, how authentic are we being to our culture? Yes. And you know, so that's also really important. Then I want to go to these bulbs the shells yes <laughs> they're made of shell they're made of shell how long does it take to make something like this so our pieces are pretty labor intensive and again for me it's not just about the materials when i first came to ghana i was just shocked about the level of craftsmanship here and artisanship mm -hmm. you know I remember when like there was a little girl and she was just plaiting her hair and she was five years old and I was like my god you know like it's in our culture to be creative whether we're plaiting hair whether we're sewing yep. whether you know but because it's so normal we don't even acknowledge it's it true. so you know all these art weaving baskets and, and things they're doing and I'm saying okay can you do what you're doing but kind of do this bit this way and sometimes it's really important not to, I try not to throw my craftsmen or women off kilter. So I don't say, this is going to be a table and they go, oh, madame, but a table has four legs. Why, yeah. why is this thing only got one leg? Yeah. <laughs> and I just, listen, just do it like this. Okay. And we can call it whatever we want to call it later, but I want you to do it like this. So the main thing is the material and the artisanship. And it's also really important for me to let the young kids coming up. You know, you'll get a parent who learned it from his grandfather and his grandfather and his grandfather. And then his son, wants to do something else. Mm. But if the son knows that this is financially feasible, yep. he'll carry on that That's trade. True. You know? You can eat doing this. Wow. You know? So in terms of like the talent that you're using, mm -hmm. how are you getting them how to? How am I sourcing? <laughs> because how are you getting the talent, Jewel? <laughs> I'm sure that's a, that's a difficult it's, part. It's been like a really yeah. nice, humbling journey. Yeah. The talent is here. And again, I want it working on this level. There are lots of people who can do this, but there are a lot of people who will say, you know, I want every shell to touch each corner. It's like, oh, chat it is. Yeah. So the talent is there, but I want like almost like the best of the best. Yeah. I also want people who are patient with me. 
because I'm you're, you're I'm slightly obsessive. No, yeah. So you wanted a particular, <laughs> particular way. way. Yeah. yeah, I get it. So there's some people who are really talented, but maybe they can't handle direction. This, yeah, and the and the uniqueness of my personality. Yeah. So there's also that. But I also find that if I find someone who can work within a material, so I'm not looking for a basket weaver. Okay. I'm just looking for someone who works in rattan. Okay. From that, we can make chairs, we can make lights, we can make tables, we can make whatever. Okay. So that's how I deal. I deal with material, you know, material specific artisans. You know, so it's like, okay, you're great. You work really well with stone. I can work with you. Let's do stone tables, stone chairs, stone lights, stone okay. everything. So that's how I found it's been a little bit easier to work with. What about keeping them? Oh, they're now members of my family. <laughs> that's where I like oh, it. Good. They're in. Okay. So it's like, you know, that's I know fantastic. husband's names, wife's names, oh, children, because it, it's almost like it's, it's a commitment to me and it's my commitment to them. And if it's just about, you know, making the product and leaving, I, I also think you have to be really realistic and just say, I need them yeah. just as much as they, they need, yeah. maybe even more so. You know, I'm one person. How many pieces can, can I make? make? Yeah. But and I still, also I need their, their knowledge. You know, especially with the woods when I first came and this is Sese, this is this. And I said, how do you say Sese in English? Mm -hmm. Madame, there's no name. That's all you know, they know. So that's all they know. So it's even like the documenting, yeah. you know, the material. So I was schooled. I'm going to school every day and learning. Learn so it's so. give and take. And, and it's that respect, I think. It's a humbling experience, but it really is that respect. Because there's a lot of stuff going on that I don't, I haven't, every day I'm discovering stuff. I call it treasure hunting. Wow. Yeah. And what about these lights there? So these are made of bamboo as well. Bamboo. bamboo as well. I'm telling you. Bamboo is amazing. Bamboo is amazing. Wood's amazing. Like the things you can do. This is made of bamboo as well. And it's inspired by um, a designer who works with these really intricate it's lights. Like a leaf or yeah, it's supposed to be leaves. Okay. Yeah. So the whole idea is to create products that are African inspired or kind of curated or made or source that kind of aesthetic or that new aesthetic that we're trying to create yeah okay okay this light yes this light yes is made from um, prior 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 is the the How the, do you call the it? broom Our the broom. broom that you the traditional broom you used to sweep and so as I said to me everything is a resource so I was like, okay, we can do something with this. And I even want to start making chairs and tables from, from prior. Yes. For, because it's, I think in terms of products, it's our ultimate kind of disregard. It's the most lowest of low, right? Lowest. Apart from toilet, like, toilet roll. But it's like the lowest of the low. But you can make like a really gorgeous light piece with it. I've never thought of making a light piece from prior. Exactly, goodness. and this is just one. Like from each piece, each piece is almost like a suggestion. Okay. Like, okay, look what this can do, and then from that, there could be a whole collection. Yes. Look what this can do. Look what this. So it, this is like a little, every, the little tasters of the possibility of things for everybody. Joel, do we value our art? I think we're starting to. Okay. I think we're starting to. I think for a long time we valued what was foreign because it was rare and not everybody could get access to it. You know, everybody values what is rare, what, what is not, you know, accessible to everybody. But now I think we're discovering things. I think we want to be more authentic. I think there's a self-awareness about who we are. And definitely, our, our, our fashion, our creativity, definitely, yeah. definitely. Do you think that that's why the world is now you know, looking at Africa. I Definitely. mean, now, even with Beyonce's album and what's happening. Definitely. Everyone's De eyes seems to be focused on Africa. But how do we leverage from that? How do we take advantage of yeah. that? Yeah, and that's the thing. I think, first of all, I think we need to own what we do. And I think we need to almost appreciate what we do. And I also think because we've been raised with it and it's been abundant around us, we don't really respect, like, respect prior how but I think we need to almost look at it with fresh eyes and say hey guys you know what we have is still so rare and it's still such a resource 
I think, you know, we need to start seeing it differently, that we need to own what we do, and that we need to collaborate, mm. yeah. you know? Yeah. I can't do this alone, and I acknowledge that I need them. Then I can't do this alone. I think collaboration is key from the artisans, from the business, from people on the ground. I think if we come together, we're all like pieces of a huge jigsaw sure. puzzle. And I think it's, it's time- Fitting it together yeah. now. I mean, together. look at you being here, you know, I- um, I, I mean- I, I saw the place and I'm like, no way, who is this person? And Chocolate was like, that's Jewel, that's Jewel Arthur. And I'm like, oh my God, I need to meet her. Because it was just, for me, I'm always promoting our own. Mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. It's important that when somebody like yourself is doing these type of amazing things, we need to push it out yeah, there. Yeah. Because like you said, we've always thought that foreign is the best. Yeah, yeah. But actually, look at the stuff that yeah. you're making. It's possible. It's really possible. And also, we haven't even touched the sides yet. We haven't even started. I look at this and I just think, oh my God, there's so... I'll tell you a story. There was um, one of the old guys who I sourced my wood from mm -hmm. in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And um, I sourced my wood from him, and I was burning the wood, burning the wood. And I think he told his son, he said, hey, is your madame dear? She likes suffering. Or... And I said, what did he say? He goes, my papi said, you like to suffer. And I said, why? He goes, why is she burning the wood? Doesn't she just want black wood? You didn't know there was black wood? <laughs> and I was like, what? He goes, <laughs> there's black, black wood? wood? I was like, there's black wood? He goes, oh, yes. And I was like, do you think I would just... Like, even some of the materials we don't know. And I thought to myself, so if this guy passes... That's it. Knowledge is what? gone. Knowledge is gone. So that's also... An, like, what don't we know? Documented. And that's why I think the West do so well, is yeah. they document their history. They document everything. everything. We, we pass it down orally, or from son to daughter, from father to son, mother to... So that it's almost... But we need to, we need to, because only God knows what's been lost. It's true, it's true. Let's go up here. Okay. Joe, I want to know about those, but then I've just seen these. What is that bamboo as well? That's bamboo, and it's inspired by a light that's called a Coltrane light in metal, but we tried to do it in bamboo to see if we can do the Africanized wow. version. That's so incredible. Okay, I want to talk about that one too. So are you online? How can people purchase the product without coming in? Without coming in. So we're sorting that out. Okay. Right now, what I wanted to do is get all my logistics, okay. delivery, okay. All, yeah. all that stuff, because you know, you're know you dealing again at this end of the market. So that That's once, true. but you know, people could still, we've got Instagram, people could still call us and okay. we, we actually shipped a few pieces out okay. during this lockdown. Oh, so fantastic. yeah. So we still do that. So you're getting shipments out of the country to different African yes, countries? Yes, yes. Different African countries. We're getting shipment in Denmark, Paris, New York. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And in terms of the clientele, I'll touch on that. The clientele, yes. are indigenous Ghanaians buying yes. the product? I won't even let you finish. Yes. They are the majority of my clientele. Wow. Ghanaians and other Africans. Yes. That's fantastic. Yes, yes. I was shocked. I wasn't expecting that either. Because I was thinking the expats or... Yeah, and they do come, but those people who will come in and say, okay, I want this, 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 Here's are Ghanians. Or, I've got a house, can you come see the house and see mm. what's possible? Ghanians. So do you do interior design? Like, so if somebody's, you know, finished their building their house, their property, can you come in and just turn it around into a space like this? We actually build. You build as well? We build, we do everything. So we build the house, we deck it out, all the hardware, the elementals, everything, and then we furnish it. Yeah. So I'm coming to you. <laughs> I'm coming to you. But what are these made of? Okay, so it's string, mm -hmm. ahoma, prayer, and, and then... Another, another prayer, is that the prayer? All those oh, are prayer, oh yeah. Goodness. Ahoma, the thing that you plait your hair with. <laughs> ahoma. <laughs> yeah. And then this is rattan. Everything's a material, everything. As I said, if I could use toilet roll, I would. You probably would. <laughs> what inspired this piece? This is glass. So it would actually shock you to know that we've actually got glass experts in Ghana, people who blow glass in Ghana. I mean, so the whole idea was to just make it feel like it was like melting off 
Yeah. Yes, melting off a tree, it was just sliding off. So I've got a client who bought this and she uses them as fish bowls. It's gonna look gorgeous. Yeah, so she's, she's got all her fishes in there and she's in a fish bowl. Oh my god, I'm so inspired. <laughs> and this? Stone. Oh just stones god. and rocks. Just to make and you can put glass on top. And again, this is the coffee table size where we could do a huge dining mm. table size. It can come in square, it can come in a rectangle. Do clients come in and bring their own type of design as well when you choose what type of material would go with it? I mean initially they come and they just say I want this and I say okay but you can do you really really want this because you we can also do play. this okay. and they're like oh, oh okay like all right then <laughs> like let's play yeah. so they you know when they come in they are even surprised that we make it. they actually don't think we make it they think we're a standard retail store oh so then when we tell people that actually no you know what if you're gonna buy this are you 100% in love? Because if you want us to tweak anything, we can tweak it. And they're like, what do you mean? It's like, if you want a different version or you want, wait, do you make this stuff? And then we start that conversation. <laughs> we start that. So a lot of our clients also repeat clients, which is, which is gorgeous. Really yeah, which is really good, which is really good. Yeah. Imperial Homes Ghana and Great Britain has carved a niche for itself within the real estate industry as the premier provider of luxury homes in Ghana and England with a mission to provide safe, good value, modern housing and personalized estate management services to its clients and customers. All our homes meet the lifetime home standard as well as the highest standards of engineering excellence, safety, environmental sustainability and cost efficiency. Imperial Homes, a signature of luxury. Gubit Card welcomes you to the land of gold, Ghana. The Gubit Card is a unique loyalty card which gives you the opportunity to enjoy discounts of up to 40% on goods and services. You enjoy discounts of the best of hotels, amazing restaurants, beauty lounges, spas, health centers, fashion houses and shopping centers in Ghana. The Gubit Card can also be used as a prepaid Visa card with Access Bank R Partners, offering you conveniences on all payment platforms. Applications is safe, secure and valuable. Call us or WhatsApp us on 0245-156705. Visit www.gubadiaspora.com. Guba Card, the best discount card in Ghana. With over 1.2 billion people, Africa is a large continent with a rapid economic growth, full of investments and business opportunities. It hosts numerous opportunities for entrepreneurs, businesses and individuals. As Africa marches towards a better economic future, how do you become part of it? Who can you safely speak to? Where do you start? Think no further, Odana Connects. We have identified the challenges people face in getting the right people and discovering the right opportunities in Africa. Odana Connects will be the platform where people and businesses seeking opportunities in Africa meet and connect like never before. Odana Connect. Join our waitlist for early access this summer at www.odanaconnect.com. That you fit. So again, I wanted to, people to associate us with, we're artists, artisans. So again, like whatever you can imagine, we can do. Like literally, that's what I say, like let's, let's create a huge waterfall, let's create an, we can do anything. So this is just to show people that listen, anything's possible here. This, we were on it for I think it was about one month, yeah. I wondered it's part of this concept. It was actually the first piece that we did before we built everything around it, yeah. So when you go home, do you sleep? <laughs> or are you, is your mind just like creating stuff all the time? You see something, you're like, oh. I, I can just imagine you doing that, Joel. <laughs> I know. And my husband, thank you for staying with me. When I see a material or I see something and I just get inspired and I sketch, there are moments I've been known for waking up at three o'clock in the morning and just quickly sketching something. I've been known for like going somewhere, stopping my driver, stop, 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 stop. And jumping out of the car, literally like maybe on the way to church or something. Stopping, stopping the car and saying, 
what is that? What are you doing? What is, you know, I've had jewelry designers or people who see themselves as jewelry be doing chairs and tables for me. So I don't, I just see the material and the possibility. I don't, you know, say, yeah. Let's go through some of these. Yeah. And this chair, yes. this is unique. Yes, yes. Classy. It is so unique. It looks like something that could be used in a music video where Beyonce is sitting on the chair just singing away. Absolutely creative. What is this made out of? This is, again, made out of like really, really strong kind of rattan. And what we do is, it's just about bending it and manipulating it. Again, inspiration from a really famous chair by, I think it's a Thai designer. And I said, listen, I think we can do this here in a different material. And so this is really like a prototype to see if it was possible. And, and we and pulled it, was. it off. And it was, and we pulled it off. Even the resin pieces, you know. Oh God. Again, this is wood. It's got glass? Yes. Like broken glass yes. inside? Yes, we smashed all the glass inside, yeah. And we're now doing even different coloured ones, so it looks like jewels. And even this stuff. Yeah, bamboo, again. What you'll find is, as I said, there are about eight materials here. So bamboo, bamboo, all the stuff you saw there, bamboo. This is chicken feathers. Ah, <laughs> chicken feathers. Yeah. But how do you even think of using chicken feathers? to make this? I've got a whole feather collection. I was thinking peacock feathers, chicken, why not chicken feathers? Because also remember that when, you know, we, we like our chicken in yes. Ghana, so there's abundance of oh, feathers. feathers around. Okay, it's okay, we've got, we got chop. Oh, actually, You're actually. Chocolate. We've got a history of... Chocolate, come here. Come, come, come. It was you that. Sit, 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 yeah, sit, 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 sit. Yeah. Your family, oh, sit, sit. This shows this sit. is durable. Like, you can <laughs> do all type of stuff. Yeah, good. When you first met Joel, right? <laughs> this is, I mean, chocolate's she next door. She thought I was door. crazy. She thought I was gonna come for this. She thought that, who's this guy crying? Who doesn't follow instructions? But what she knew was that this guy, he's some guy. <laughs> <laughs> But for real though, she was one of the greatest bosses I've ever had. Um, most creative, like, you'll be thinking about something and you think you've got it and she comes and like, she just takes it. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I learned a lot from her. So seeing her here, or seeing you here actually, you know, wasn't surprising before her. Wow. And I was really, you know, touched and, uh, you know. Oh, please. Ah, true. He was oozing oh, talent. <laughs> he was. <laughs> He was oozing talent, <laughs> oozing talent. What, he, so you worked with Joel before? Yeah. For a year. For a year, where? She made me scum I was, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I yeah. Yeah. I was his old boss. Like, no, listen, you're not going to do this. <laughs> wait, 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 let's go. We used to do advertising. Advertising. Really? I did everything. I told you, I said, I worked here, I worked here. Charlie, I'm done. Yeah. Listen, you, you I, have no idea. You, you see, her name, <laughs> her name is actually, actually what it is. For real, for a year. Wow. So and he, he I think he was just, year. he just started, or oh, you were starting chocolate. I was thinking of starting. Ch starting chocolate. And I was like, yo, bro, just go live your dream, man. Wow. And, and what do you look think at him about, now. I know, look at him now. Mm. Um, chocolate, what do you think about her pieces? Uh, eh? <laughs> Can we go back to the room? <laughs> like, like, listen, literally everybody who comes in, first thing I go is like, this. They're like, oh, nice piece. I'm like, you have no idea. See, have you seen that black piece? And nobody has got it so yeah, far. Yeah, that's like, what he does. He does do that all the really? time. Yeah, he does. He does. I'm I kid you not. Like very out of this world. For me, being different is my forte. Yeah. I am just like I'm not normal. Yeah. And so when I meet, not to say you're not. It's okay. Not it's okay. I'm special. It's okay. Uh, yes. We're unique. Yeah, they're weird. They're weird. We're yeah. unique. No, you know, I've always struggled with the words. Okay. So when you when when you meet like-minded. Creative. Uh, creative pieces like several times I feel so down maybe like because of like stuff happening and the moment I come up the escalator and I see That's pieces nice. here I see the sign it just gives you something be like yo <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah anyways bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness I never knew you worked with chocolate. Yeah, he's like family. How do you feel when you get reactions of 
some of your pieces and somebody makes that, wow, this was made here or wow, you can do this. How does it make you feel? It makes me, listen, I'm humbled. I'm really, really humbled in that sense of, of course, thank you. Thank you for loving everything. You know, thank you for loving the pieces. But there's also a piece of me that just thinks, but we're the cradle of the world. Of course we can do this. Of course, look at where we came from. Look at, you know, of course we can do this. So yes, like I'm so humbled and you know, every day I'm so humbled because even when someone comes and they say you want to buy a piece and I'm like, oh wow. <laughs> like, yes, okay, great, fantastic. You know, so they're like my babies that I part with them. So, but there's another part of me that just says, of course we can do yeah. this. Like, I, I have no doubt about the magnificence of who we are, you know, and what we're about. And, and you said you, you touched on saying that, you know, there's about a hundred different designs that are in your head. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's amazing for you to have so many things in your head that you want to do right here yeah. on the continent. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to do that? I'm gonna, I think the thing about Africa and Ghana and coming back home is I think you are limited by your imagination. And I, you have, it's not easy. Trust me, it's not easy. This takes a lot of hard work. But you're limited by your dreams. It's like dream it. It is possible, you know? And sometimes, you know, people say, oh, I can't do this because I don't have the money. I can't do this. I don't have... The For a long time, I was collecting people's rubbish. You know, I was collecting people's rubbish. So if not now, when? Mm. You know, our parents have done so much more with less. It's true. So I think it's our turn. I think it's our turn to tell our stories. I really do think it's our turn to tell our stories. Yeah. And what do you say for those people that are in the diaspora, um, thinking of moving back home, yeah. taking that bold step? What would you be your advice to them? I would say, um, respect that this is a completely unique landscape. The respect you would give to London or New York or Paris is the same respect you should give to Ghana or Nigeria or Ivory Coast. And, but if, especially if you're from the diaspora, you, I do think that there is an obligation to an extent to add to that narrative, to, to build. And here you're a pioneer. You're not, you know, you, you get to actually do something unique. You get to actually count. You get to be a founder. And, and, and that's not easy to have that. That's an honor. You know what I'm saying? That on. So with that, with that reward comes a price. But I think it's definitely a price worth paying. Mm. So yeah, yeah, plan. Make sure it's what you really want to do. And give yourself time. It's not going to happen. You know, what you built in London took 10 years to build. Don't expect to do it one year here. You know, it's going to take the same time. But the feedback and the, what you'll get back, unbelievable. Do you regret staying in the UK for so long and not moving earlier? I used to say that a lot. <laughs> I used to say that a lot, a lot, a lot. But I look at the time that I was also... When I first came back, there wasn't... How, when, when did you move back? Officially, officially, I moved back. That's about seven years ago. I tried to go and come, go and come. Um, I think there was about one or two furniture stores. And it's changed. In five years, it's really changed. So, and I also think I needed to grow up, you know, and, and be willing to put in the work. And I, I think that comes with a certain amount of maturity. And also asking yourself what it is you really, really want, you know? Um, I don't think I was ready to come here when I was 20, mm. you know? I needed to, you know, you're coming to Ghana, you need to put in the work. This is, you need to make it count. You need to work smart. You need yeah. to be efficient. Yeah. So that now I think I came, I came at the right time. Yeah. I came at the right time. I know it must be a silly question, but would you ever go back? I go back a lot. I remember last time I went, and I think it's the first time I've gone back and come back early. Really? Yeah. I tried to get out a lot just to, 
But I think for the first time I went, I think I was in London, I was in the tube station. I was Angel tube station. <laughs> I had two more weeks left in London. I was like, oh, okay, I need to go back wow. in like a few days. Yeah. You had enough. Yeah, it's, it, it was just like, when I was younger, it was like, what I value now is time. Time has, you know, I don't, so it's like, it counts here. So I've got to go, you know, I'm doing th a week, two weeks, I get everything, it's like, let me go there where every, every moment counts. So I still love London, my God, I love London, it educated me, my friends are there, my siblings are there, it'll always be like a second home, but Ghana's where, like... Yes, it's yeah. happening. <laughs> Everything yes, you've got to be. You've got to be on it. You know, doors are open, but you've got to push them. You it's know, true. you've really got to. So yeah, and you can miss it. It's true. You miss a week in Ghana. You've missed a lot. <laughs> oh, this person was here. This person here. This thing just happened. You just. Think, I was away for five days, and that's another thing. When I go to London, I meet my friends who are still doing the same. Like when I tell them, like. Jill, you've gone to Ghana, you've done this, you've done this, you've done this, this has happened, this has happened, good, bad, ugly, the whole yeah. thing. What are, you, what are you guys up to? Oh, you know, I hate my boss. <laughs> and it's like time, yeah. Sure. So I think that's also interesting. So yeah. how are you able to balance your career and what you do um, with having a child, you know, being a mother yeah. and um, with a young child yeah. even, yeah. and, you know, family? Yeah, it's worth it. It's amazing, but it's not easy. I've got a very, very, very compassionate, understanding husband who knows exactly who he married. <laughs> he knows exactly who he married. Mm -hmm. um, Snap to that. Yeah. <laughs> it makes a difference. It makes a difference. I mean, when we were doing this place, he was sleeping on the floor next. Oh, yeah, painting walls. You know, you can't do this alone. You can't. You can't. Um, I've got a two-year-old who is, who exactly, he knows exactly who his mother is. He goes to, listen, he goes to deal, negotiate with me. When he was born, I put him on my back. I went to the mountains to, yeah, he, it's, it's life, wow. yeah. And also for him to see as well that nothing comes, you know, you've got to work for it. So, yeah, so it's not easy, but it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth it. Oh, without a doubt. You wouldn't change anything. Oh, don't say that, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. Do you know what? If, if you were the president of Ghana... The president? Ooh, yeah. okay. If you're the president of Ghana, what thing would you change when it comes to the creative industry? I think for so long, we've all been working in our silos, surviving in our own, this person's doing this, this... But I think there needs to be... You know, like in London, you have something like the Creative Council, the Fashion Council. I think there needs to be a coming together okay. of... You know, first of all, sourcing all the creatives out there who are doing things, because there are a lot of people that are hidden. And then second of all as well, not necessarily mirroring the Western model, because what I found here is our creativities are intrinsic in our culture. Like when you're in London, you say, I'm a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. I'm an architect. Mm -hmm. I'm it. a fashion designer. And you, you stay within that, that mold, yeah? I'm interested in interiors, fashion, I've done, you know, architecture, product design. Our culture, our creativity is so embedded in our culture. That's why I call myself a storyteller. Chocolate's a storyteller. That's true. You know, I'm sure in a few years' time he's going to be making products and interiors. And a lot of creatives I've met here in Ghana are like that. So again, where does furniture start and product begin? Where does fashion start and beauty end? It really, so I would say, find a way that we can all collaborate. We can all meet. We all are aware of each other. Because also we're not aware of each other. People come and go, where have you been? I said, I've been here for seven years. Where? And you know, there are people who are doing it. Who are, so I think identifying who we are, yeah. um, finding an umbrella in which, you know, we can all meet. It's not necessarily, listen, money helps, yeah, money course. helps. But I think also supporting each other can help, you know. If I wanted to do, you know, somebody needs a space, this is also an event space. We also do production for shows, you know. If a creative can work with another creative. It doesn't necessarily be money that you're handing over, but it could be skills transfer, it could be. So I, I think, you know, we're always as strong as the team. 
So I definitely think, you know, find out who we all are, you know, and then create some sort of umbrella in which we can all find each other, a resource book, I don't know, something. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure you have enjoyed today's show. I mean, Out and About has turned into a proper sit down, big interview. And I'm just inspired by what Jewel Arthur is doing right here on the continent. It's really important that we sell our own, we promote our own, and we educate ourselves in what everybody is doing. Mm. So make sure that whenever you are in Accra, you visit Gallery 1957, the new Afropolitan. Yeah. And there's right. a new showroom coming as well. And there's a new showroom coming. Yeah. Where, where is that going to be? Laboni. Laboni. Yeah. And I think this is 200 square meters. That will be double this. Double this. Yeah. So, so. I'm going to lay a bed <laughs> there, literally. And I'll make you a bed to lay in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when she opens up, guys, I'll be definitely doing a yeah. part two.